To discuss more is Anthony uh, Scaramucci, founder and co-managing partner at Skybridge Capital. He's also a CNBC contributor. You could find multiple things in the tax code, Anthony, where if you get this, a smart enough guy, uh, this type of stuff can happen just because it's so hard to write these things. They, they, they really tried with the Roth to, to prevent this from happening, and yet there was still a way to do it. So what's the solution? Well, one of the ways to solve it is that if your Roth IRA goes over $3 million, $5 million, Joe, pick a number, it starts getting taxed. And so that takes a, uh, an incentive away from doing what Peter Thiel did. Or, you know, you could, you could also take a position that you, uh, you know, it's a million dollars, period, the end. Anything above a million dollars, you either have to take it out of the Roth IRA and subject it to taxation, capital gains, or income tax. Something like that, a threshold will likely be imposed after a story like this, because I think that the, uh, the goal for this stuff was to help middle income people, lower income people, uh, you know, have a nest egg for their future. That, uh, that's one way. We've had lots of tax uh, conversations recently, uh, Anthony. I, I don't, you know, I don't know anyone like you or me or even Andrew or that, that says the, the wealth tax just is, is, is a way to go about that. Maybe, maybe I'm, I don't want to speak for you. Do you. Is that confiscatory? If you've already paid income taxes on it and built it up to that point, do you think the government should just come in and say, I want five, 10, 15? She says only three, two, three cents, Elizabeth Warren, but is that one way to do it? Well, no, it's, uh, and I saw the uh, debate with Tom yesterday that Andrew had, that would be a weapon of massive capital destruction. Uh, there is no society for 5,500 years that has imposed a wealth tax that had anything other than an unmitigated disaster as a result of that policy. So you can't do that. Uh, the cold hard truth, though, is that we're borrowing about 53 cents for every dollar that we're spending now. We can blame it on the pandemic, but we have to step back and look at that and see if that's going to erode the confidence in our capital system, the U.S. dollar, et cetera. And so uh, nations that do that, Joe, uh, they always get in trouble. Um, we probably need a value added tax in the country. I say that regretfully because, you know, I'm a right of center fiscal conservative. I certainly don't want a value added tax. But if you step back and look at the amount of spending that we're doing, we need sort of that tax to catch some of these people that are outside of the tax system. And so when goods or services are flowing back and forth, the people are getting paid in cash or they're, they're off the grid, so to speak, from a tax perspective, we're able to collect revenues from them. Anthony, uh, how would you... I was just going to ask, Anthony, how we handle um, the idea of folks, uh, really uh, truly wealthy folks who effectively take unrealized gains in terms of stock and use that as collateral to effectively take out loans, live off of the loans. Some, in some cases, they live off the loans the enti their, their entire life. And then, of course, it gets stepped up uh, at, at death. Um, we saw this seems to be the case a little bit with uh, with Jeff Bezos. Not that he's living off the loans completely till death, because he actually does sell shares occasionally. But he usually takes that money, it seems, and and uses it to fund Blue Origin. So again, another complicated thing. You were arguing with Tom yesterday about this issue. You, we've decided in 1913 that we were going to have an income tax, not an asset tax, in the United States, and so. Why did they do that? Because they were trying to incentivize the formation of capital. Moreover, everybody knows that the capital gains was a lower rate. Uh, why were they doing that? They were trying to in institute and incentivize you to have a, a long-term gain so that you could put that money back into your company. What I would submit to people here is something that Ken Langone once said a long time ago, my money, your money, Andrew, Joe's money, it's not in a swimming pool in our backyard in $100 bills. It's being invested in the economy. And so I don't really have a sensible solution for that. Some people will say that that's unfair, uh, but that is really the bedrock of the capitalist system to allow capital to form. And then, of course, to be borrowing against your capital, that's as old as anything in our, in our societies. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.